Now, um, so as I said, we did it primarily to uh, to do something with the, with the probability ranking principle to make sure that we can estimate the probabilities without any examples. Uh, but in the process, uh, you, you should realize this gives you a general way of estimating joint distributions. So if you have a bunch of variables and you want to estimate a joint distribution, this is one way to do that. And why would you want to estimate joint distributions? Well, it turns out that you can actually solve lots of really interesting problems by estimating joint distributions. So, for example, if I happened to have a parallel corpus, if I happened to have uh, a set of documents where I have uh, sort of an English version of a document and a Chinese version of a document, then I can compute joint distributions between sequences of English and sequences of Chinese. Now, don't confuse this with machine translation. Machine translation does exactly that. It computes joint distributions over sentences in English and sentences in Chinese. So what's the difference here? This does the same thing, only it assumes things are exchangeable. Right? So it throws away the word order. So uh, there's ups and downs to that. The downside, obviously, is that you cannot use it for generating translations, because it would output things in arbitrary order. It doesn't have any notion of word ordering, so what it spits out would be ungrammatical, so you wouldn't be able to give it to users. Uh, that's the downside. The upside is it doesn't waste probability mass on estimating the surface flow. And what that means is with a very small amount of data, you can estimate correspondences a lot more accurately than you would be able to uh, in an MT system, right? It's more frugal. It's not, it's not spending the probability space on estimating the surface form. It's just learning the correspondences between English and uh, Chinese in this case. Right. And what you can use this for is you can use it for uh, cross-language retrieval. So if you had, for example, if you were mo monitoring Twitter and Sina Weibo at the same time, uh, you could actually measure similarities between uh, Chinese tweets and English tweets in almost real time. Okay. Um, so you can use it for multiple languages. You can also use it for other tasks such as uh, image annotation and image retrieval. Right. So if you had images and you found a way to convert images to a, to a set of discrete features, and there's lots of ways for doing that, uh, then you can actually estimate probabilities like that, right? So you could have a handwritten example, Fort Cumberland, right? What is the probability of the token Cumberland assuming the sequence of exchangeable random variables in the image? You can do it for, uh, you can do it for handwriting, you can do it for photographs as well. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's one of the state-of-the-art state approaches for image retrieval and uh, image annotation. Okay. Uh, okay, so here's, here's an example, I guess if this is confusing, here's an example of how it would work uh, for a cross-language case. So uh, you're assuming that you have a parallel corpus, and a parallel corpus means a sequence of pairs, English document, Chinese document. So the way you're estimating a probability of a certain Chinese term, assuming an English sequence, is like that. So you have a paired, uh, you have a pair of urns, right, and the sample could have come from that pair, in which case it's the probability of drawing the English words from phi, the English side, times the probability of drawing the Chinese word from the Chinese side. And then you integrate it over all the uh, pairs that you have in your, in your corpus. All right. Okay, uh, so uh, if you do this for Chinese, here's the kind of stuff that you would get, right? So this is the English seed, environmental pr protection laws, that is the English uh, query. Uh, and this is the kind of distribution that you would get over Chinese uh, if you did that. So this is just based on a, uh, on a parallel corpus and, uh, and counting. So uh, what, this, what this allows you to do is, uh, these, are, these terms, they're not translations of any single word in the query. They are terms that are associated with the entire query. Right? So that's the way to... Uh, that's the way to think of them. So uh, it's basically synonymy, but usually synonymy is a single term to a single term or a phrase to phrase. Here you're taking a set of terms and saying which terms are synonymous with that set of terms. 